Hello and welcome to Mr Tompkins EdTech. With two papers down and one to go, many of you have been asking about my predictions for topics likely to come up in paper three. So I thought I'd make this quick series of videos compiled from questions covered in my practice papers and past paper walkthroughs. In each video, I've taken one topic I think is a dead cert to come up on paper three and created a compilation of all the questions I recorded on just that one topic. Question one asks us to circle the inequality shown in this diagram. So we've got this line that stretches from minus seven up to six. Now the value of x is gonna lie somewhere in between these. Now we just need to work out uh, which way around the signs go. Now underneath the minus seven, we have a field dot. And the field dot means that the number minus seven is included in the range. So we're going to draw a greater than or equal to symbol between those two. So x is greater than or equal to minus 7. At the other end of the scale, we have an open circle. That indicates that number 6 is not included in the range. So we need to include a symbol like that. So x is strictly less than 6. So our answer is going to be this one. Question 6a. Solve the inequality 3x divided by 2 is less than or equal to 9. Now, as long as we don't divide through by a negative number, we can treat these pretty much the same way as we solve any linear equation. Uh, so the first step I'm going to do is to take that 2 and cross multiply it. So move it across the equal sign, or not the equal sign, the less than or equal to sign. So that's going to give me 3x is less than or equal to 9 times 2, which is 18. 3x is less than or equal to 18. And then dividing both sides by 3 is going to give me x is less than or equal to 6. Okay, in the second part, solve the inequality 4 lots of x plus 2 is greater than 12. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is divide both sides by 4 to get rid of that 4 on the outside of the bracket. So that's going to give me x plus 2 is greater than 3. And then moving this plus 2 to the other side, I'm going to get x is greater than 3 subtract 2. x is greater than 1. Finally, represent the solution set that satisfies both answers to part a and b on the number line okay so from the first part we had x is less than or equal to six so x must be less than or equal to six and in the second part we had x is greater than one so x got to be between one and six it can include six but it cannot include one okay i'm going to show the range by drawing a line from 1 up to 6. So I'm going to draw a line from 1 to 6. Now the ends of the line depend on the sign. So if it's strictly greater than or strictly less than, we do an open circle. So at 1, I'm going to have an open circle. And if it includes the end point, like uh, at the 6th end, we're going to do a field circle. Okay. So because this sign is strictly greater than, we've got an open circle. And because this one is a less than or equal to sign, we've got a field circle. In question 17, we're given three inequalities and we're asked to find the region R, which satisfies all three of them. So we're going to have to draw these three lines on the graph and then see what's in the middle of them all. So x is greater than minus 3. Well, the line x equals negative 3 is a vertical line through minus 3. So getting a ruler out and putting it on graph at minus 3. Let's draw that on. So that's a line x equals minus 3. Now the next line, so we've done that one, 
uh, x plus y is less than or equal to 2. Okay, now rearranging that, so y is less than or equal to minus x plus 2. So that's a line that passes through the y-intercept of 2 and has a gradient of minus 1. So for every one unit uh, you go along, you're going to go one down. So that's a kind of a 45 degree angle then, isn't it? Like that. So let's draw that one in as well. So that's my line y is equal to minus x plus 2. And then finally, y is greater than or equal to x over 2 minus 1. So that line is going to pass through the y-axis at minus 1 and have a gradient of a half. So it goes, through, oops, it's a bit chunky. It goes through minus 1, has a gradient of a half, which means for every one unit you go along, you're going to go half up. So if I go two units along, we're going to go one unit up. It's going to pass through that point there. So let's put the ruler passing through those two points. Oops. Okay, so that's my line. Y is equal to x over 2 minus 1. Now, if you're not so good at working with uh, intercepts and gradients, you could also do a table of values for these. So you could do x and y values, and then pick values along your axes. So minus 4, minus 2, 0, and 2. Min so minus 4, minus 2, 0, and 2. And sub those in and work out what the, what the corresponding values of y are and plot them. Uh, that's another way of doing it. Uh, I'm just using the intercepts and the gradients to quickly draw my lines because I'm quite good at this sort of stuff. Uh, right, so now we've got our three lines on here. We need to work out which is the region R. Now, I'm tempted to think it's that triangle in the middle, but we do need to test it. So let's take a point somewhere in the middle. Let's take this 0, 0 point and test it. So at the point 0, 0 is x greater than minus 3. So is 0 greater than minus 3? It is. So that is, so the right of my my line x equals minus 3 is inside the range. So we can get rid of that bit. Don't want that bit. Uh, now the next one, x plus y is less than or equal to 2. So is 0 plus 0 less than or equal to 2? Is 0 less than 2? Yes, it is. So my 0, 0 point is on the right side of that line. So it means I can get rid of everything on the other side of the line. So it's not up there. And then finally, 0, 0 here. Is 0 greater than or equal to 0 minus 1? So is 0 greater than minus 1? It is. So that's true as well. Uh, so I can get rid of the bit below the line here. And R is indeed that triangle in the middle. But it's always good to check. Question 19. A, B, C, D is a rectangle. The x-axis is a line of symmetry through the middle of the shape. These inequalities describe the shaded region. X is between P and Q, and Y is between R and S. Write down the values of P, Q, R, and S. So if X lies between P and Q, then this point here has got to be the point P, and this point here has got to be the point Q, so our X value can lie between them. And our R value and S value are what Y lies between. So Y has got to be bigger than R. So R has got to be the lower point on the line. And S is going to be up there. Okay. So that should be fairly easy then. So write down values of P, Q, R and S. So R, P and Q are going to be... 
those values, minus 2 and 6. So P is minus 2, Q is 6. And R and S, well, we can see S straight away. S has to be that value up there. Oops, three. Uh, and the point down here, R, is going to be the reflection of that point. So C is the point six minus three if I reflect it in the x axis. So R has to be the value minus three. Question 19b has a graph of y equals x plus 2 shown. And we're, we're asked on the grid, identify the region represented by y is less than or equal to x plus 2. And y is greater than 3 minus x. And to label that region r. OK, so y equals x plus 2 is already on the graph. But we don't have a line for y is uh, y equal to 3 minus x, so should we probably draw that on first? Now you can either do that with a table of values, so you could, uh, oops, you could pick some values of x, like uh, minus 2, 0, 2, and 4, and find corresponding values of y. So y is 3 minus x, 3 minus negative 2 is 5, 3 minus 0 is 3, 3 minus 1 is so 3 minus 2 is 1, and 3 minus 4 is minus 1. So we can plot those on. So minus 2 goes with 5, 0 goes with 3, 2 goes with 1, and 4 goes with minus 1. OK, so I now need to draw a line through my points. Uh, now, if you notice that these two inequalities have less than or equal to whereas this one oops this one is strictly greater than now we can show the difference between those on our graph by using solid and dotted lines so I'm going to use a dotted line down this one to show that the points on the line aren't actually part of the inequality so that is the line y is equal to 3 minus x this was the line y is equal to x plus 2. Now we've got one more line to draw. We've got the line x is less than or equal to 3, which is a vertical line passing through x is equal to 3. Again, that's a solid line because x is less than or equal to 3. So which region is it going to be? Uh, now probably it's going to be the one that encloses all three so let's pick a point and test it might not be let's just pick that one there so that is the point two two what we're going to do is going to try that point in each of our inequalities to see if it holds so four two two y is less than or equal to x plus two is two less than or equal to x plus two 2 plus 2 is 2 less than or equal to 4. Yes, it is. That one holds. And the second one is 2 greater than 3 subtract 2. Is 2 greater than 1? Uh, yes, it is. So that one's also true. And then finally, is 2 less than or equal to 3? Yes, it is. So that means that that point lies well, it meets all three conditions, so it must must be the region R. So this point here is going to be the region R. Question 8. List the integers that satisfy both these inequalities. I've got 2x plus 7 is less than 0, and x must be greater than minus 10. All right, let's take that first one. Uh, first of all, 2x plus 7 is less than 10. Rearranging that, I know that 2x must be less than minus 7. And dividing both sides by 2, I know that x must be less than minus uh, 3.5. OK. Now, because x is a whole number, that means that x must be greater, uh, less than or equal to minus 4. 
So x can be minus 4 or minus 5 or minus 6 all the way down to, or x has got to be greater than minus 10. So it means it must be greater than or equal to minus 9. So it can be any value between minus 4 and minus 9. So my answers are minus 4, minus 5, minus 6, minus 7, minus 8, and minus 9. Are the whole number solutions of a and b different? Uh, we've got a, which is solve 3 is less than or equal to 3x, which is less than 18, and b, which has 3 is less than or equal uh, less than 3x, which is less than or equal to 18. Okay, now notice everything there is a multiple of 3, so I can simplify both expressions by dividing everything through by a factor of 3. That tells me 1 is less than or equal to x, which is less than 6 and b gives me 1 is less than x, which is less than or equal to 6. Okay, so the values of x which satisfy a are going to be the values 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and the values of x that satisfy b are the numbers 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6 because the endpoints are slightly different aren't they okay so what's different about them uh, I suppose a contains so I'm going to say a so a contains 1 but not 6 and b contains 6 but not 1 okay probably overkill but i've covered everything now check out my other predictive topics by clicking on the card appearing here also you can check out my practice paper walkthroughs by clicking on the card here or you can even go through actual past papers by clicking on the card over there Good luck in your exams and I'll see you next time.